Jamie Moss, I'm the founder and managing director of Rethink Events and we're so delighted to have more than 550 of you joining us here in New York today and more than 100 more people joining online from over 36 countries around the world. Welcome to Brooklyn, welcome to New York and if you're from out of town we have one ask and that is spend money, spend a lot of money. <laughs> Imagine how many of the communities in the inner city where they don't have access to healthy food. Imagine if we can grow it in public housing, if we can grow it inside our churches and our senior centers. It's an amazing impact on the health issues. It's an upstream approach instead of the downstream approach we have to allowing people to lose their sight, lose their limbs, or go on dialysis. Now in New York City, plant-based diet is the default menu if you're in a hospital. Instead of feeding the healthcare crisis, we are preventing the healthcare crisis. In our own backyard, we're taking kids like the mayor talks about, and gone from this to this, from this to this, from this to this, literally reimagining every aspect of how we live in New York City. This room has the ability to nourish the world. You know, even the United States Department of Agriculture recently set up a committee um, for the first time dedicated to um, urban farming and uh, innovative farming. So I think that's certainly a step in the right direction, even for the federal government to recognize that this is a, this is a growing sector around the country. You can't do it without having a great team of people. Dealing with these grocers and being able to manage those relationships is hugely important. And that was the first goal, being able to grow Basil that actually taste like basil, which if you live in Berlin, getting basil that actually tastes like basil, it's not that easy. We have a really big focus in our company on diversity, um, and it's not just around uh, diversity of people, it's diversity of thought, um, and that leads me nicely into um, one of our key areas of focus, which is diversity of crop portfolio. The place for this in terms of food production and the food system is not just about not just about quality, it should be about that too, but also has to be about a, a lower impact product. Our target is growing more with less. Uh, have a different attitude, a different approach uh, to our clients, and not just trying to push brown boxes, but to partner with our clients uh, around the world and help them develop the technologies moving forward. They think that the things that are easy to regulate are not necessarily the things that are the most impactful. iGos is a Italian-based company that designs and produces energy technology for contamination in controlled environment. I think AI is a marketing term. It's, it's a dangerous term. We, uh, the AI researchers, they don't use the term AI. We do have to deliver these really complex models, these really complex technologies in a way that's very approachable to anyone. Because it doesn't matter how high tech your facility is, there still are probably challenges around technology that you're facing and that everybody on the farm, whether they're the head grower, the CEO, or an hourly worker, should be able to utilize it. Hi, I'm Natalie, I'm with Agro News. I was wondering, so we're talking about like things being fully automated, but if I'm following this conversation correctly, we're kind of thinking in the context of like big commercial farms. I know as someone who's like grown hydroponically at home, if there was a system that I could buy and I could just have produce like growing on loop and I didn't have to touch it, I'd absolutely love that. So do you think there's potential and the sense of there being like an at home or like domestic fully automated product in that sense? A fully, fully automated farm that you can just leave in the garage for five years and makes you produce yeah. is a ways off. Um, but you can do most of it. Uh, you can bed the seed and come back a week later, two weeks later, and it can be totally fine and growing. Um, that's, that's very soon. But the, the application of this kind of technology are, are absolutely wide. We go from the forage for, for cows to cannabis. We're reconnecting the farm to the urban center. That's, that's the promise of CEA, that people understand that local is important. I think you talked about it's patriotic, right? We're tribal creatures. We want to support the network around us. You can get the same outcome, the same genetic structure using other tools. It's just genetic provides a much faster route to get there. We need to think about this in integrated fashion because you're not eliminating disease. That's by having a controlled environment. 
but let's be proactive about it. Let's use all the tools in an IBM toolbox to really address it effectively, not just the genetics, but there's lots of other tools we can use. We do answer, you always go plan it. But to protect the planet, you need good people, and to keep good people, you need some profit to pay for it. So it's not one or the other, it's all three. I think that's important to realise. Vertical farming is going to coexist with field farming in the next 30 to 50 years, so there's still going to be regions of the globe uh, where they have a good climate and can still grow most cost-effectively outdoors. Um, but we will increasingly have to struggle with these external forces of climate change. But in the future, space stations will be larger and have more production area, more place for something like an entire indoor agricultural environment. So we are building a carbon eating machine using microalgae. Microalgae are in the same family as um, other types of algae like seaweeds, kelp, or nori. And they're incredibly efficient machines in turning uh, carbon into the building blocks of life. You know, I think we've been hearing a lot about leafy greens and, and berries, even spirulina, but in Econoke we're on a very important mission, and it's to save the world's beer. Our goal is to raise the knowledge of real wasabi within the gastronomic world. We'd like to see a distributed smart farm evolution where food is not traveling any more than 250 miles and uh, we think every community should want a smart farm uh, for their own uh, food security and a farm that can grow nutritionally, complete uh, meal close to home. From our perspective, uh, collaboration in this industry as it's young and starting is going to be necessary. There's always aspects and components of your intellectual property that you can always keep. But sharing some of this information with others will help us all. So in Leafy Greens, there's a lot of talk about democratizing produce, as in like trying to sell these greens, often in urban food deserts where people can't access them, right? But then there's also those companies that are selling them to like Whole Foods, right? And you're not gonna have a Whole Foods in the Bronx. So I'm kind of wondering in your like more niche markets, how, what is the whole deal with like democratizing the greens? I think everybody here at this conference has that same goal. I think we, the reason why we pour so much of our hearts and souls and sometimes personal capital into this stuff is we think that this can change the world. Now, stepping back, let's be realistic about where we are in the evolution of this technology. We're sitting in a room, we're discussing computers in the 1970s, that's where we are. Sustainability is something that has been going on for us in Europe for a long time already, of course, and we see it more and more in the US market. Instead of being only an integrator of stainless steel, of food safe products, uh, products, we're looking for sustainable solutions. Uh, hello, my name is Dan White, co-founder and CEO of CleanCrop Technologies, where we are using electricity to unlock cleaner seed, better germination, vigor and yields across the CEA space. I'm Siddharth, CEO at Polybe. We are automating pollination and yield forecasting using nano drones and AI. Today, seed companies and co-ops are customers, but in the future, they are distributors. The nature of this industry is to build these farms, you have to plan in advance. You've got to line up contractors. It's a complex, complex thing. And so by the time you get the farm built, your technology is usually a couple years old. It was about selling a concept. It was about selling an idea. And the conversation now is so different, right? It's about how quickly can we go and how fast can we commercialize this. The truth is, nobody was paying any attention to us for a lot of years. And that's okay, because all along the way, we were able to continue to invent and grow and do things.